hello. Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it is Friday night. Sheena is running on significantly less sleep than most people should. Yep. Uh, and I just don't care anymore, so it's going to be a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> uh, we have been together for about 10 minutes, and we haven't stopped laughing. Yep, it's been a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Appar- uh, apparently, Sheena uses bad boy trucks as, as good old <laughs> uh, So I ordered furniture in December, and it was supposed to come February 2nd, and it's now... A lot later than that, and I still have no couch. <laughs> so my friend, who also ordered furniture and is waiting yesterday, said that she saw two bad boy furniture trucks, which is where I ordered my furniture from, um, getting off the highway. And Crystal didn't quite understand what it meant, and she goes, what, do you use those as good omens? I was like, what the heck? No, I bought my furniture from bad boy, so I'm assuming that they had my couch in there. <laughs> I don't use them as good luck charms. That would be... <laughs> I mean, it's it's... It's me, so am I. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, we're uh, super happy that you guys are back. Welcome back. Yes. Um, okay, so. Well, first, well, I'm Crystal. Oh, <laughs> I'm Sheena. <laughs> <laughs> and you are listening to Narrow Squeak. Yes, you are. You and our boss is listening. Well, oh, yes. he has listened. and Yeah, the one episode he decided to tune into is the one that I said... I'm going to binge this for hours, and please don't tell my employer. So, now my employer is well aware that I just binged true crime that day. So, anyways, <laughs> won't be saying that again. That never happened. Never <laughs> happened. If you're listening. It never happened. It did not. <laughs> but he said he enjoyed it, so that was good. Yeah, that was good. And promoted it to the rest of our coworkers, so that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, getting lots of people listening and kind of giving feedback, so... That's been exciting. It is. I have had a couple people ask for the links and stuff lately, which is great. I know. I'm like, ah, here you go. I'm so excited. Uh, And we have some great things in store for you guys. But So make sure you are following us on Instagram and Facebook because there's some exciting stuff coming up. But I don't want to tell you. You'll just have to look for it. Yep. Pay attention. We got some awesome stuff on the way. So just tune in and keep following our pages. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so this is what I was super excited to tell you. Okay. Is it my turn for updates? Yes. I'm, I'm pumped. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, on the TikTok, because I'm addicted to TikTok now. The TikTok. <clears throat> the TikTok, yep. That's my age coming out. Um. Okay, so there's this hack on Netflix. Okay. And if you type in 9875, every true crime documentary on Netflix pops up. Every single one. Oh. Yeah. Did you try it? I did, and, and it, it works. <gasps> yeah. I bet I was, you that's like their, like yeah. their coding. Yeah. So somebody, somebody figured that out and put it on TikTok, and then so now it's like all over the different Facebook pages and stuff that I follow. Like this just came about yesterday. So I'm like, oh my god, is this real? And I had to try it because you know, oh yeah, sometimes the internet lies. The internet lies <laughs> all the time. So anyways, they all the true crime documentaries pop up. So Yay. super excited about that. So oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, I bet you gonna, people are gonna find some like really obscure good ones. I know. So I'm like, oh, because it's hard to find them all on there i think sometimes so it is this just compiles them all in one spot so anyways prime it's easy prime you type in true crime everything in the dog shows up like (laughs) even stuff that doesn't actually exist on prime they're like you might also like this but we don't have it (laughs) i know (laughs) just kidding (laughs) we know what it is but we don't have it speaking of i did finish goodnight sugar babe last night yeah what the hell right Uh, yeah (laughs) i'm (laughs) You're right. It was a freaking train wreck watching that entire show. It's insane. And she never got charged with it. I, I guess she ended up in jail for something else, but I cannot I, find I think her. obstructing the um, investigation, but she didn't get charged with the actual murder or anything. It's crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. And everyone on that show, I'm just like looking at them like, what is going on there? <laughs> and this is why literally Rob could not look away. He said it was like a train wreck, which is a bad Oh. Own words considering oh. what oh, happened. Shit. Whoops. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> um. So, but here's my thing about it because for those that don't know us on a personal level, I myself very much grew up in an area in different areas, wherever whatever city I lived in at the time, um, where it was like very much community based, mm-hmm. and I assume you probably did too. Yeah. So the dynamic between that woman 
and the kids in the neighborhood, I know I can, in each neighborhood I lived in, I knew at least one. Yeah, was like I her. know. I did too, and I'd be there at their homes and stuff. Right, and like... because they were the mother hen of the group. Now, this is not to say anything negative about those people. There are some of those women that are literally just there. Doing it for the good of just to do it, right? Exactly. But... They're there to take care of those kids that need that help, They're yeah. the lost souls. But this woman was not that. Sherry, a.k.a. Sugar Babe, is... Um... Uh, yeah, just not a good human being had, at all. Like, I'm like her son. Her oldest son was a product of an incestuous. I know. What the fuck? Like, I know. It was uh, there was a lot of incestuous stuff going on there, and I was like, uh-huh. this is so uncomfortable. Like, but there are so there was a lot of people that clearly by the end of the documentary were involved that never never had any impl- implications at all, and were in the documentary. I know, blaming it all on Sherry, and nothing comes about. I know, and yeah, so that was a. Uh, Anyways, I did finish that, and I was like, what? It was crazy. <laughs> I know. What the hell is going on? And then I, uh, speaking of Prime again, I tried to watch the Albert Fish documentary today oh. on Prime while I was doing some work. Is it new or older? It's older, and it's not well done at all. Like, it's very cheesy. Um, but I was trying to eat my butter chicken Why? for lunch. Just, Why? Why? I don't know, because I was just working and eating butter chicken, and then they're talking about the stews that he made with little boys Why? butts and I was like with like carrots and like the gravy and the, I was like Ugh. they don't eat I know if there are like <laughs> Ed Gein Albert Fish Jeffrey Dahmer if you're watching any anything on those guys you just don't eat during well, it maybe I've, maybe just save that for later I know but the egg or sorry the Albert Fish was really like they really got into the details of they the do. um the stews and stuff he was making and like the seasonings he was using and I was like like, you know, when they talk about Jeffrey Dahmer, you just know he did this or that. But, like, reenacting Albert Fish, like, making the stew. And I was like, Ugh. What the <laughs> yeah. hell? But it's not well. It's so cheesy. And, like, it, it, it's such a weird documentary. I haven't finished it yet. Like, it's not well. It's like I put it together almost. Sorry if whoever <laughs> made it is listening. I apologize. But the documentary, like, it's just. Anyways. So, so I. So you're not uh, watching that then? Yeah, I wouldn't. Um, I, Well, yeah, I wouldn't. No. I would like to see. I would like to watch a good documentary on Albert Fish. I just oh, haven't, yeah. I don't know where to find one necessarily. I haven't looked that hard either because I started with this one, but it's not very good. <laughs> you know which one I just recently watched for the first time and you're going to judge me for it because... <laughs> I'm going to judge you? <laughs> you are going to judge me. The very first time I have watched Dahmer. Really? Yeah. Jeremy Renner is super creepy. I know. And a very good Dahmer. <laughs> like he, he did a great, great job portraying him. I... It was really well done, but so when I was about 15, I think my cousin owned the movie and I was at her house babysitting, kids were in bed and I went to watch it. You don't watch that at bedtime. Nope. So within the first 10 minutes, literally turned it off, turned it off never looked at it again because I, I judged it based on that 10 minutes and then I saw it pop up and then I realized it was Jeremy Renner in it because... Thank you, Prime. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, I could probably watch this. So I did. I haven't good. seen that in years, but I should rewatch it. It was really and well done. I haven't watched My Friend Dahmer yet either. I started it and then I didn't finish it. The newer uh, one that came yeah, out recently. I haven't watched that um, one. I didn't get through that one either, but mm. I start them and then I just <laughs> I, watched, I get distracted. I watched the biopic, though, on Gacy that is also on Prime. Ah, uh, I don't... Uh, not well eh. done or just I think it it just was too specific in a time period like it was around when he got caught it did show a bit of the crimes but it didn't really give you an idea of the progression of things mm. um, I'm using hand gestures because you guys can see those <laughs> <laughs> um, so it doesn't really give you a good idea of how things happen in the sequence they happen there's a lot of flashing back and forwards uh, so kind of confusing I it, guess. It's, yeah if you don't know the whole story of of Gacy you wouldn't understand it quite like you would get the gist of what happened but it's not a good depiction of the of the sequence of events, so I wasn't. Eh. Yeah, there's a couple documentaries on there that are. Um, anyway, I did watch the Cecil Hotel though. Yes. <laughs> and so did you finish? I'm it? sorry. <laughs> People, I so I'm sorry. I thought I was done. <laughs> I was not. There was 20 minutes left of the last episode, and that 20 minutes was 100% dedicated to Elisa's mental health and mental health supports and how they could have done things better. And clearly, had I watched that 20 minutes, I probably would have loved it. 
right from the start. <laughs> uh, so yes, I owe I owe Netflix an apology. <laughs> Sorry, Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> because that was really well done by the end of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say on that. Yeah, no, that was well done. So I'm excited. I don't know what else is coming out. There is going to be a new Biggie documentary yes. coming out, so I'm excited to watch that. There's some great um, stuff. And I started Behind Her Eyes on uh, Netflix. I've seen it pop up, but I yeah, haven't watched I've it yet. barely started it, but then I uh, it seems like it's going to be pretty creepy. Mm. Um, so anyways, I plan on maybe watching some of that tonight. But, so I'll let you know. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I could not. No. <laughs> <laughs> we don't watch. We don't watch scary things at night. Oh, that's probably why I don't sleep <laughs> very well. <laughs> that does explain a lot. But I don't sleep very well, but I also, it's just in my brain, right? <laughs> if I watch yeah. it right before bed, definitely not sleeping till 5 a.m. and waking up at 7. If I'm not watching anything, I'm still laying there till 11, looking at the doorway, like, who's going to come down the hall and kill me? <laughs> <laughs> come at me, bro. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. All right. So this is our creepy pasta episode. So we're going to, Crystal's going to tell me some stories and some of them might be true. Some of them might be from creepypasta. And I guess I have to guess. You have to guess. So I think. Which is real and what's not. Yeah. I think the best way to do it is I'm going to read my three stories. And then I'll guess. And then you'll guess. Okay. And I'm not going to tell you how many are real and how many are creepypasta. Finger <laughs> weight. <laughs> Spirit <laughs> fingers on the creepypasta, guys. Um, so I'm not going to tell you which is which, and when I'm done, then you can pick which ones you think are real, which ones you think are not, and then I'll explain some of the background on the ones that are real. Wonderful. Just one thing I want to say. Every time you say creepy pasta, I think of, like, the Halloween zoodles. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you have Halloween zoodles? Or, like, there was a Halloween something, was there not? I remember eating, like, little creepy pastas. <laughs> I know that Zoodles used to have a... Ba- oh, you're thinking I, of Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. Yes. Because <laughs> Scooby-Doo and Zoodles had a pat. Yeah, had a bat. they had the little ghosts and stuff. The ghosts and <laughs> goblins. <laughs> so that's what I picture every time. It's like my spoon in my bowl and like a little ghoul on my spoon. Oh, my God. <laughs> so so the, I just- <laughs> the first time I heard Creepypasta, I had no idea what it was. And it was... I'm making myself sound really old but it was within the past two years <laughs> i have no idea what creepy pasta meant it's urban legends guys <laughs> it's the same thing i looked it up i tried to see if there was a difference between creepy pasta and an urban legend nope <laughs> okay, okay thanks for clarifying here's my first story so okay. story number one a woman is standing on the street in front of her house when a man walks up and shoots her to death for six days they have no suspects And they only catch the guy because someone tips them off. But the person they claim committed the crime couldn't possibly have done it because he was on house arrest with an ankle monitor on on with a GPS tracker in it. Come to find out that the GPS gave the, uh, sorry, the GPS gave the suspect an alibi for the time of the crime. After investigation, they proved that the suspect had in fact committed the crime by removing his leg. Jesus. (laughs) So that's. How do you want to shoot someone so bad you take off your own leg? Right? Okay. (laughs) So that's story number one. Okay. We're coming back for that. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, story number two. A man comes home one night and can't find his wife, so he goes out to search for her. After searching for a few hours, he finds her by the lake in their small town, dead. Uh, immediately, the police suspect the husband did it, and they arrest him and hold him for 10 days. Forensic analysis, however, determines that she was actually she had actually been bludgeoned to death by an elk. So that's story number two. This is my last one. Uh, A woman finishes grocery shopping, throws her bags in the trunk, and gets in the car. Uh, It's nighttime, and there's a truck behind her that keeps flashing his high beams at her. At one point, he tries to pass her, uh, but she won't let him pass, uh, most likely because she was scared of road rage. In reality, the truck driver is flashing his high beams because he could see someone in the backseat of her car, and he wasn't sure if he was seeing things or if it was real, so he'd flash them again to see more. But every time he did, the person in the backseat would duck down further. He tried to go around to pull up beside her to warn her. Now it's the early 90s and the truck driver didn't have a cell phone. So he memorized her license plate, pulled over, and called 911 from the nearest payphone. By the time they reached the woman's home, she had been raped and murdered. The murderer was never caught. I think you've heard some variation of all three. Yeah. Okay. 
So, we have man with no leg to commit murder. We have woman beat to death by an elk. And we have uh, rape and murder with the truck driver following her. What, what do you think is the first one? Ah. Uh. I want to say the first one's not real, but I think it's so crazy that it has to be real. Okay. And what so, about what about the elk? I'm going to say the elk is the creepy pasta. Okay. And the backseat of the car? I'm going to say that's real. Okay. All right. Did I screw up? <laughs> I'm so nervous. No. There's no, there's no <laughs> right way. You, don't, you have no idea. Okay. But I just so. like being right. <laughs> <clears throat> so... Here's the first true one. Quincy Green was on house arrest for carrying around an illegal firearm. He wore a GPS ankle monitor, but the officers who put the monitor on his leg didn't notice or forgot that Quincy had a prosthetic leg. Ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so he he had taken off his leg, committed the murder. They don't know why he killed the woman. Um, but there was video footage of him hobbling around town oh <laughs> without his leg. Um, and when they went into his apartment, they found the leg in a box and it hadn't moved at all in 72 hours. How do you, like, how do you not know that you're putting an ankle bracelet on someone that doesn't have, that has a prosthetic leg? Right. What? Well, and I thought, <laughs> and I, I was wrong because I thought the GPS was actually sensitive to skin. Like, I thought those monitors had, like, a oh. a sensitivity that it had to be connected to skin. It doesn't. So, but I'm like... That's insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how do you not notice that? I don't That's know. That's crazy. Okay. Anyway, so yes. So that is story number one. Story number two is also true. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now hold on, because i got to pronounce the names properly. Agnita Westland was found by her husband husband. Ingmar, near the lake in the village of Loptehammer <laughs> in September 2008. This is in Sweden. Uh, the forensic pathologist actually found elk saliva and hair on her uh, when they did the examination. So this is very similar to like, I don't know, an owl coming in and oh, the dingo eating your baby. <laughs> the dingo actually did. I know. Yeah. But this, the, well, this one's similar to the, the guy with the the staircase. Ah, uh, yes, 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 Right? Yes. So, so did he have two wives that got beat by elves or just one? <laughs> just this one. Just this one. So this is, I texted Shana yesterday because I was laughing hysterically and there is nothing funny about someone accidentally being killed. But <laughs> elks are known for being gentle, right? Except when oh. they've eaten fermented apples. Oh, oh, the elk was drunk? The elk was drunk. And apparently when they eat these fermented apple, apples, they become aggressive, which means... She was beat to death by a drunk elf. <laughs> elk. <laughs> oh my lord! What are the chances? Right. Very slim, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one in okay. less than a mil, like more than a million. Wow. Yep. So she was beaten to death by a mean drunk elk. Man, lay off the sauce, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. That's insane. Yeah. So <laughs> then my third one was obviously... I have heard that before. That's why I was like, I don't know if I heard it in like a true capacity or if it was the urban legend, but I remember hearing that story. With the person in the backseat? Yeah. Uh, so it's actually become relevant recently because... Okay. Uh, so yes, the third story was the creepypasta about the guy in the backseat of the car. Recently, uh, it went around on YouTube. It became a little bit viral, but they were doing a promotional video to show how easily it was for someone to sneak into your car in a Walmart parking lot and someone so the security camera they showed it where you could see the man get into the back seat of her car and then you saw the woman get in and not realize that he was in there and they were saying they were trying to show how easy it is for human traffickers to come or for or whatever purpose to come and um, attack you if you're not if you're not behaving safely in a parking lot so that went around recently that was why it was relevant I'm like oh I know she's she will have heard of it, and I'm like, yeah. it's relevant enough that it's like, she's yeah. gonna think it's real. <laughs> and you oh. did, you oh did. Oh my lord! You thought my stories were real. <laughs> you thought my story was real. I need to start checking the backseat more often. Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, those were my creepy pasta. I had a really hard time because what I said to Sheena before we started recording, a lot of urban legends and creepy pasta are based on real stuff right there's some 
myth. Like, there's some sort of like base story that's that's real that makes it extra creepy, and then it just kind of it's like broken telephone. Yeah. You tell the story once, and it's then you tell it again. Exaggerated and change, and exactly. Mm. So it becomes this like I don't know if you're telling me the truth here. Uh, kind of thing. Uh, and now there was one really cool one, but there was a situation, and I didn't choose this one because if you listened to the episode of My Favorite Murder that I did, you would have known right away that okay. it was true. But I'm not 100% sure if it's true because I tried to verify it and I couldn't. But have you heard the one about the couple that go walking in the woods? With Ted Bundy? Mm, it's not ringing a bell. It's a hometown. And this is why I oh, wondered okay. if you would actually listen. Because I skipped some of the hometowns. Because Sheena Sorry, skips. <laughs> Sheena's a skipper. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, so this couple, on their first date, uh, the the daughter of the couple had, was the one that actually wrote it in. But when I find it online, it's like this friend of a friend. And I can't actually find any recording or anywhere where they actually recorded that he did say this. But... They go on their first date, they go into the woods, and they just feel uncomfortable. There's something odd about it. Uh, and they are walking, and it's dark. And for whatever reason, the, the man says that he, like, steps on oh, something. Oh, he trips and it, or steps on Yeah, yes, and it felt... Squishy. Yeah, and okay, he's like, they were creeped this. out, yeah. and it freaked them out, so they left. And then a couple years or whatever they later... Ted Bundy was there and just was... Yeah. Yeah, he had just committed the crime. He had just done it. He heard them coming. He hid... Oh and he god. said that the couple had walked right into his okay, crime scene. I did hear that. Oh my god. That's why I didn't do that one because I'm like, I know she's gonna know yeah, it. I, I know she's gonna know it. <laughs> but I'm like, that is it. A part of me wonders whether it's creepy pasta because when I found it online, it was like, oh, this friend told this story. But then when the person wrote in, they said it was actually their daughter. Like yeah. they had actually uh, done it. Um, but I can't find anything verifying that it's real mm -hmm. but it's just crazy enough that it could have happened and Ooh. realistically like we're not dealing when when it's a serial killer you're not dealing with a boogeyman or the monster genuinely people probably did come close to seeing things all the time oh. because it was the oh. 70s too and yeah just free for all for everyone yeah oh so yeah i would never you'd never yeah after knowing that you just stepped on a body but didn't realize you stepped on a body like, I think that would forever be imprinted in my brain. Because <laughs> I'm worse. just thinking of, like, the squishiness. Like. You could be that European couple that drank the water at the Cecil Hotel. <gasps> All of the people that drank the All water. All of the people. All of the people. showered in it. Huh. Uh, uh. Yeah. Anyway, okay. that's gross. <laughs> yeah. So. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Those are good. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It's shorter. So I apologize for the shorter nature of this episode. But you know what? We had fun with it. I liked it. Yeah, it was right. fun. But it was really hard, so I'm not going to promise we're going to do this one again, because... Yeah, it's really freaking hard. I spent two whole nights stressing <laughs> and just researching things and be like, no! And then, like, yeah. No, I just, I literally was like, I can't do anything. I can't leave my house. I have to do this. <laughs> and I was, like, stuck on the floor, but then I was texting you, and I was like, I'm so tired. I'm falling asleep on the floor. <sighs> but I'm like, I can't give up. <laughs> well, so. and then, so we were super ambitious. We created a plan, and we're like, let's do two episode recordings in one. And then two days ago, yeah. was it? I <laughs> messaged Sheena. I'm like, I forgot we were going to do that, and no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I was almost in tears. Like, how am I going to get it all done? I would have, but. I, I don't think I would have. <laughs> <laughs> you would have heard about this little leprechaun that killed everybody because that's all I would have had. <laughs> yeah, uh, classic. Well, that was fun. Yeah. So this, this setup is a little different this time because I think we're going to try no promises if you get two creepy past episodes in a row it's just because we suck and we couldn't make it happen but we were going to try and do two episodes related to St. Patrick's Day because it's coming soon uh, so to do that we had to split up the creepy past episodes now again we suck sometimes and timelines don't work so if we can't get a second set of recordings done in time we apologize and you'll just have to listen to our leprechaun stories a little after st patty's day. st patrick's day but actually while i was researching for the irish related st patty's day um stuff i did come across some really cool things that i didn't know mm. so um because when i couldn't figure out the creepy pasta stuff i was like i'm just gonna start with the irish stuff because like i can't and that's like i had spent like an hour and a half and then you're like we're not gonna do it and i was like 
I'm kind of relieved, but I'm also like, I just spent an hour and a half. But no. now I have a now I have a good um like yeah. Anyways, I learned some cool stuff. So and you got a head start. I didn't know. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. You should look because there is a story. So we have a different setup for the next one as well. So hopefully we'll tell you about that if it comes to fruition. I'm hoping it does because that would be super exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're hoping to be able to have a little surprise for you but if that doesn't work out there is a story that i watched on prime within the past year that was actually really really interesting and kind of cool but i can't remember if it was in ireland or if it was in england so i'll have to i'll have to look that back up so yes i was just what actually when i was looking at the creepy pasta stuff i came across a story that was real but it didn't sound real and i'm just going to share the brief synopsis of it um i forget where it happened but this woman just said, like, her husband cleared out her bank account, and he went on a trip by himself. And then the cops are kind of like, that's a little strange. Um, so they come, and they want to check her house out. And she goes to her neighbors, and she goes, I have this box of sex toys, and I don't want the police to see them. Will um, you hang on to them? And so the neighbors just willy-nilly take the sex box, and they put it in their house, and then they start to get a stench. And her husband's decapitated head was in with all of her sex toys in her neighbor's house. <laughs> that was real. <laughs> what the? Yeah. How big is? I, a, I don't know. That's a big that, sex that toy big, box. Yeah. <laughs> A little freaky, that lady. That's a, that's a big toy box. <laughs> but anyways, I thought I was going to use that one, and then I thought it might be too gruesome, but then I've just said it anyway. So anyway, there we go. <laughs> we, you got to have some really cool neighbors that are willing to take your sex toys, though. Right? And how do you not look in the box? I'm nosy as what's shit. What's in the box? Oh, what's in the box? <laughs> if you ever give me a box and expect me not to look in it, I'm going to look. I'm going to look 100% right away. Only just because of Brad Pitt and... Yeah. What's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's forever in my head. So. For anybody that doesn't know that reference, please go watch the movie Seven. Seven. It's like 20 years old, but it's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> but that's all I have. <laughs> and in that, oh, I'm not going to, in case you haven't seen it, I'm not going to give away what was in the box. Yeah. No. Just but, watch the movie. But like, I might give you my sex toy box to hide for me. I'm still going to peek. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and I would anticipate that. But my neighbors, I love my neighbors, but... They don't need to see what I'm using. No, I, know. <laughs> I probably wouldn't give a box of much to my, to my neighbors. Have you even met your neighbors? No, I haven't. So that would be <laughs> super weird. <laughs> Again, I'm new in my. I'm also antisocial sometimes. So, anyways, I think that that's that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, we will uh, catch up with you next week. I hope you guys all have a great week. And uh, Sheena, don't die. Try not to. Bye. Bye. <laughs>